Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy, and today we're gonna do a technique refresh, a little bit of stained glass work. I did a stained glass video a while back, and that one had butterflies on it. This one is gonna be flowers, and I'm coloring it with Copics this time. And I'm using colors that don't really necessarily go together. And uh, I'm gonna show you how I do that, but first I'm gonna prep the art. I'm using this Alta New stamp set, Hennet Elements, and I want my Nina cardstock to have a border around it, so I'm just making a little border using my Weems and Plath navigation ruler that I've showed you before. Links to everything will be in the description. Micropore tape to hold it down. And I'm using my Lawn Fawn block to stamp my, my long border. This border made me think of a lot of the stained glass I saw when I was in Europe because they had these really fancy, fancy borders around each one of the main images in the stained glass and I thought that would be really cool on two sides of it and then put a rectangle of flowers in the center. So I'm just stamping those along the pencil area that I had drawn in and then I'm gonna, since this is see-through tape, I can put it right over top of the stamp stuff and then just start stamping and it'll protect those areas. So I'm gonna stamp all my flowers on here using another Lawn Fawn block. The Lawn Fawn blocks have really comfortable edges around the outside. You can see they kind of have curvy wobbles and they're just really great. If you if you ever have those sharp ones that kind of make your fingers hurt, this is really, these are really nice ones. Come in all different kinds of sizes. I'll link to them for you too. And I'm filling in the smaller areas with the smaller elements in the stamp set because it has a really wide variety of super big flowers and then tiny ones. Now here is where a mess up happened. I was pulling too fast, I think, and pulled some of the surface of the paper off. <laughs> so I'm going to trim this out when I put it on my card. But there you go. Um, I haven't really experienced the Micropore tape tearing too much, but I think I may switch entirely to the frog tape instead of using just this most of the time. But I have all these rolls of it that I bought on advice of somebody else who said that it was great stuff. So I'm gonna try to use it up. All right, here goes the Copic coloring. What I did was reach my hand into my bag and just randomly pick out a color. So at least the main two colors in each one of these is a random one, so purple and yellow together, tough combination. And then the intermediate colors that I used, I, I did pick out because I know how those colors will help transition from one to another. And for the most part, when you're blending colors that don't belong together, that, that don't really blend very well, a lot of moisture is your key. You just wanna have a whole lot of, of moisture in that paper, because it's gonna help those colors to just kind of mush out and blend more. I'm even using an RV10, which is a pink, but it's gonna, it's a really light one, and there isn't a really, really good light violet, so I thought the pink would help. So I have my little leaf filled in, the parts that didn't stamp when I was doing my stamping. Filled that in with a Copic Multiliner, and then I'm just doing some real quick scribbling on that with a blue-green and a yellow-green color. Those go together very well, and I did pick those out because I wanted to make sure my leaves were green. And after the yellow and purple one had dried, it didn't look quite blended, so I just went over it again. So you can always let things dry, see how they look, and go back over them again if you need a little touch-up. Here I picked out pink and orange, and I decided I was gonna to try to do the pink on the inside. Usually I do dark colors on the inside and light on the outside, but I thought I'd flip that around since I'm getting all whimsical anyway here. And I didn't like this orange that I pulled out, but you know, there you go. I'm gonna to try to mix it with the RV02. The colors are really close to each other, so there's not a whole lot of blendy blendying going on. Or at least there's not a lot of difference in the color. So I'm trying to make an intermediate color by touching the markers tip to tip, and that does not ruin the markers. Just so you know, you can always make a transitional color by touching your tips together. So I went in with some YR16, which is, I think, a better orange than that YR65, and then just started doing some blending with that to try to add more, more color in there, because the, um, the YR16 is just a brighter orange and gave me more difference against the RV02. So just popping more color on there to try to get those colors to smooth out and blend together. Let's see. Next, we are going to just go over top of, of all of the color here with the RV02. Sometimes just another you know, final coat of things tends to smooth things out a little bit. 
The next color my hand picked out was a B02. So here we go. With, I'm going to put the B02 in the center of it. And I am going to apologize for my kitties. They are, one is sitting right next to me and bathing himself. So you may hear little licky sounds. And Suki just walked in from down the hallway chirping. So who knows what kind of sounds we're going to get through the rest of this voiceover. Alrighty, so I decided to go with the RV02 because now that I've got a few of the random colors placed in here, I wanted to start repeating some of them because that's going to unify the whole thing. If it's all like random weird colors randomly picked out of my bag, it could start looking like a mess. So I decided to use the RV02 that I already had used on the pink and orange flower. And for the most part, this does a fairly good job of making a little purple between the two because they're very light colors. Lighter colors are going to be a lot easier to blend, and especially when they're both light. But I decided to pull out a B00 to add just a little bit more of the light blue color to, uh, to stretch that back out and then go one more time with the RV02. It kind of makes an almost purple flower with pink tips instead of just being a blue and purple flower, which I think came out pretty cool. Now I'm back to repeating again and I decided to pull out that blue-green color and then try to see if I could blend that with a purple just to get crazy here. And I wanted to make it a darker flower because I didn't want it to look the same you know, brightness as those leaves that were in the blue-green. And so I just went back and forth between the two colors and did a, a real light blend, a little, little soft blend on them. And of course my Y17 has to come out all the time so <laughs> I had to get my my Y17 marker out, blended that with some green, and then I'm going to start filling in some of the flower centers. I'm not going to add shading to those little tiny pieces, the little flower centers, because I'm going to do some decorative work with a pen later on, and that's going to hide any detailed blending that I go into in those areas anyway. So as I get more of this done, I'm just going to continue to fill in those center spots, mix uh, mix more of my colors. The orange really took over the purple, so it's almost an orange into a dark orange type of blend on that one flower petal. Fill in more of the centers. And this whole time I was trying to decide what I was going to do with the in-between area. And I opted for a very, very dark blue-violet color. I thought about black originally, but then I thought black would be just a little too much, and I'd also lose all of those little shapes that I had bothered stamping in between. And I think the blue-violet color kept everything kind of feeling bright and happy and cheerful, and then it's a little less dramatic than black, but I think it really works because then my little, little tiny shapes still show up. So just filling that in and not worrying about any shading or light and dark, anything at all. And then the border, I'm just going to throw some color, blue, green, yellow, and some orange on those strips. Next I have it all trimmed out, and what I'm going to do before I put it on my card and with the black layer is to just go around the edge with a black marker. And now for the detail work. I love doing little fun things like this. I got out my Uniball Signo pen, and I will link to a video at the end where I show you some comparisons between white pens and pencils and paint type things and that sort of stuff that I did a few weeks ago. The Uniball Signo Pen is definitely my favorite for this kind of stuff. You can see I'm not having any trouble with getting it started, although some people say that they do have trouble getting it started. If you're one of those people that doesn't do well with the Uniball Signo, because some people just swear by their jelly roll and their, their Signo just dies on them all the time, they don't, can't get a consistent line like I'm getting, can you tell me in a comment down below? <laughs> whether you use the Uniball Signo or the Jelly, and then if you know your elevation, I have a hunch that this could be geographically an issue. If you can leave a comment and tell me where you live, and maybe, I guess maybe the state, and if you can figure out your elevation, that'd be great. Because I, I just want to find out whether or not it's because certain people live at certain heights. I'm in the Seattle area, so I think I'm pretty close to sea level, and everybody here that I know that's a crafter loves their Uniball Signo Pen, and they seem to work very well here. And so that's that's my theory, and I'm you know it's not going to be a scientific thing to just go by comments, but I thought that might be a helpful thing for all of us to start figuring out why it is that sometimes the white pen works and sometimes it doesn't. 
So on all of these, I'm just adding random white doodles. There's not really a, a science behind it. This one I decided to do like little feathers around it, little little outlines. There's all kinds of fun little little doodly bits that you can do. You can also mix in using some black pen to add some dark detail. And I've done that before on images like this and it comes out really well as well as, as this. So I added a sentiment. The sentiments that come with this set are very tiny so I just added it on a little flag. But I can also picture this with a Mother's Day sentiment. This would be a beautiful card for your mom and uh, all kinds of other occasions as well. So thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me on this video. Here are two more. These are the promise videos I will link you up to. Click on those if you're on a desktop computer and you can click in the right hand corner for my blog and get lots more information. Take care.